welcome to the Pilsile, uh, to Ikamva and also to your viewers. Um, just taking you back, uh, I was working at uh, Wanderers Football Club, and then um, uh, the head of field by then at this club, Hans Fong. I think uh, he was doing a little bit of research about me, what I was doing at, uh, at Wanderers back then. Um, then uh, he called me in. Um, with the mentor of my Eric Boom, we came in, we had a meeting with him in the field. They, they were still preparing the NFT was preparing for preseason. We talked um, that they're looking for coaches and he, he feels that I'm one of those coaches that can come in and add values. Um, but what he said at the time was that uh, I was not going to be head coach as I was a head coach at Wanderers. So, so I said no problem because I always wanted to be in this environment. Um, so it was a dream come true for me to be here. Then, um, he appointed me back then as a under-18 assistant coach to coach my work. So. Okay, and, and how did you find that environment at the time when you just arrived? I think that was in 2018 uh, season. Um, when I arrived at first, uh, because we started in uh, 2018, at the end of the year, um, I firstly worked with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, under-12 team needed by uh, Coach Grombi. I think uh, in Cape Town football is well known as one of the best coaches. So I worked with him in terms of learning the philosophy, um, the ice philosophy at the time, which um, proved to be vital uh, at where I am now, learning how to develop a player within the ice philosophy, the playing model. And then later on, uh, 2019, we started a season with Coach Dangan, um, with the under 18 group. Um, he's also another coach that has been here for many, many years. He's a safari instructor. Um, he knows the game very well. Um, I must say, at the beginning, was nervous, just like anyone coming into this environment, uh, you know, coaching here, talking to the players here, talking to the boys. But uh, I think what helped me is that uh, I'm a confident uh, gentleman. I'm a confident coach. So I knew, I knew, I knew my story, and I understand the game better. So I was coming from an angle of being an assistant coach um, because Daniel was a head coach. So, so I would watch how he does things, and then I would try to improve players. Um, I would focus more on those players that are struggles, and then on match days, I would sort of like analyze the opposition and give it to him and try to help him as head coach. And uh, both of us were in the journey, we were in the journey, and we're still in the journey of, de of developing the youngsters. And I think we did it very well. Yeah, let's talk about your experience coming from Wanderers and having played in the playoffs and won a couple of. Uh, tournaments and uh, league games as well, or being crowned league champions in the Langa LFA. How much of that, of that experience assisted you in this um, in this environment? Uh, that experience was very vital in my coaching journey, also coming to this environment. Uh, I will, I will, I will, I will always, Wanderers will always be close to my heart and the chairman of the club, Eric Kuhn, um, for, 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 for what he did to me. At Wanderers, uh, I was owning the project. It was my own project. I had a vision on, on how I want football to be played. And uh, I had a vision also of how a, a club should be run. So I implemented my own you know, philosophy, my own uh, vision on how things to be done. Um, uh, at once I said the chairman was by a kit, we had a training kit, um, we had play of the month. Um, so, so we're training in the morning during holidays. We had team talks as an LFA club in the school at Langa, Langa, Langa High. We've done things that have never been done in the NFA level. I make sure that I brought professionalism into it. Eric will support it. We we'll have uh, camps, go away with teams. Um, we have uh, training at the beach, uh, hikings, uh, meetings. He provided food. He provided everything. Um, we got track. We we put track suit. We put uh, players soccer boots. And the success that we had in the field was because of that. We won everything in London. Absolutely everything. The league four years in a row. Easter tournament, which is one of the tournaments four years in a row, second division. Everything, we won everything with the best players, um, with the youngest players. So that experience helped me when I came here um, in terms of now saying, okay, I'm a coach, I can coach, I can lead, you know. And uh, because at this stage, I'm currently the head coach of the under-18s, and that is now has, has helped me, that experience to come here now. Let's talk about that appointment of being a head coach, because you came in as an assistant coach, coming from an LFA, uh, being a, the head coach at Wanderers, and also be a person responsible for, for, for coaching in the local football association of Langa. How did that experience um, you know, transcend into 
into your appointment as the head coach at uh, at Um The first thing uh, I want the viewers to know is that I, I worked hard for it. Um, I worked very, very hard for it. I knew the day will come um, when I'm in a space of elite level. Um, here we're talking about youth uh, elite level. You know, uh, you know, Ajax and also Cape Town Spurs is one of the best academies in Africa. You know, every coach wants to coach here. Um, every player, youth player, wants to play here. And uh, for me to be appointed uh, last year, which was 2021 as a head coach, um, was a dream to come through, let's be honest. I think um, every coach, uh, aspiring coach from the township, I will talk about the township, will want to be here. But I've paid the hours, I've paid the queues for it, I worked hard for it. And uh, when I got it, uh, it was sort of like a reward, you know. But not only to stop, but also to continue. So uh, when I got it, I, I felt... Uh, now I've arrived in terms of uh, people from Cape Town and also South Africa, generally in Africa, and then they will see who's Coach Masmu is in terms of what I do in the field, in terms of developing the lighters to be better players. Um, uh, rest assured that this is not about me, it's about the players that I work with. They must develop to another level of becoming greater soccer players. Um, firstly, as human beings, and as I always say, and also as soccer players, I think uh, so far, um, uh, we're doing very well. I'm doing very well with the club and also other fellow coaches within the academy. Let's chat about your, your coaching qualification so that we can combine that with your experience. At what point did you start your, your coaching journey and what qualification have you got now? Um, I always like to take the story a little bit back. I was a football player playing football. And then uh, one morning I was watching a, a show on ETV. Uh, I don't know the name of the show again, but uh, the SAFA president, Denis Jordan, was there and the question was posed to him, if someone wants to be a coach, what should he do? Then he talked about uh, enrolling in the SAFA coaching courses, you know. Back then there was an intro, now they call it uh, sort of like a D-license. Um, there was an intro level and then uh, I talked to a gentleman called Eric, he was a longer president at the time. Uh, and, and then I went to him in terms of asking, because he, he also served SAFA as a vice president, SAFA Cape Town, I asked him, you know, they mentioned something of SAFA and coaching courses, um, can you please make sure that uh, you listen for me? And also there was a lady called Lisa, who was working at uh, SAFA Cape Town as, a, as an administrator. Then I also communicated with her to say, please inform me when there's something, and he did. It was myself and colleague Nomga, the coach also in Langa. Then we enrolled for our... That was back in 2012, we enrolled for our intro, um, which was done just uh, next door at, uh, at Vasco, uh, at Iparu. Then uh, I think it was a 10-day course, sort of, uh, first time doing a course. I was a footballer, and I was taught how to coach and all of that. Then after that, um, that was C-license, equivalent to C-license. There was a big uh, gap because of finances, because I wanted to do my B-license, which is a KFB license. Um, because of finances, I couldn't do it. Um, when I was at Wanderers, and then the chairman of Wanderers uh, did a huge thing for me in terms of paying for me, which was 8,000 rand um, in 2016. And uh, I enrolled for my KFP license, which was 20 days. Then now I'm a SAFA uh, or KFP license qualified coach. Wow. That is and then uh, in, the, in the middle of it, the small coaching coaches that we have done, um, which is KVP, it's a Dutch C license, and also we just did an Analika coaching clinic. Uh, there, there's a lot of coaching clinics that I've attended that come along just to make sure that I equip myself as a coach. Well, wow. looks like there's been, uh, you know, the, the club and the chairman at Wanderers played an instrumental role in sort of shaping your journey because one understands that there's a lot of difficulty for aspiring coaches because you have to pay out of your own pocket yes. and you have to be dedicated with a lot of hours yes. and some people are working you know it's very difficult to take off so this is quite an interesting journey coach and and with all that 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 uh, qualification that you have what are some of the positions you occupied at um, at SAFA level after you graduated um, at SAFA level, I got a call, which I always respect SAFA because it's a matter body of South African football. Um, we got a regional office, which is SAFA Cape Town. I belong under it. Then we got an office, which is a provincial office, SAFA Western Cape. I also belong under it because I'm in Western Cape. It's always a dream of mine to serve under those two structures 
as I'm aiming to serve also on the national structure in terms of being a coach. So one day I got a call from a gentleman called Linda Pistoli. Um, he, at the time he was a HOT of coaching. Um, so he called me and asked me um, if I can come in and be part of the coaches at, uh, at Safa Cape Town regional level as an assistant coach at a time of under 17. So I said, no problem, I'll be there. Um, I was there, I worked hard. Uh, we're doing selection, we did a team. I was working with a coach called uh, Jeremy Wenkite at the time. I learned a lot also from him. Um, then after that, uh, a year later, I was appointed as the head coach of that uh, team, which also was a dream come true for me to carry a Safa name, you know, under my wings. Then um, at the time, we went uh, to a regional um, a trial uh, in, uh, in UWC, whereby some of the players that I coached at the time were selected to be part of the provincial team. I was also selected uh, to be head coach of the provincial team that uh, went to Deben, which was a dream come true um, to be named as a Suffolk Western Cape head coach at that level. Um, and some of the boys that we worked with at that time, um, they're doing wonders uh, at sitting clubs just behind us now, Oba Kechaya was part of that team, now he's with the NFT team at Cape Town Spurs, um, at Cape Town City, Jaden Rose, um, he's with the first team working with Eric Tinkler. There's a lot of boys that, uh, you know, are joined these academies and they're doing well for themselves, that we worked at, at that suffer level at that year. Wow. And let's talk about your, your current position right now. And, I mean, we've touched a little bit on it, and how have you found find it now? Because you're someone that is receiving players from junior ranks and you also mold them and you pass them on. Um, so how much of a challenge is that for you? Because as you find like a solid team, then those boys, they graduate and, and, and then you receive new boys and then you need to start all over again. Uh, when I was appointed, the mandate was simple from the from head of youth, which is Duncan, uh, that appointed me as head coach of the under-18s. He said, must go make sure that you develop players for the APC and also for the first team. So the player that I work with must never be stagnant to a point that now the players must be released at the club. It means football, they're not developing. So he said, under you, make sure the players are developing. Make sure that you fine tuning them. They are football aspects, everything. And uh, that, that was big. That was a huge thing because you don't want the players to be stagnant under you. So the group that I had, I think it was a talented group, the first group that I had as a head coach, um, and some of them now just won the Bay Hill, and then some of them are training behind me. Um, your likes of uh, Clyde, uh, your likes of Shwaib Martins, they're training behind me, and there's a lot of boys that will be probably joining the first team in the future. But the whole squad are with the ABC that I had, which is which is an achievement um, from a coach's point of view. And um, normally I get the players from under 16, so so. The level is a little bit different, the intensity is a little bit different. Some of the boys get challenged, but I'm there. I'm appointed to challenge them in the under 18s. Um, our chief scout, Louis, will, will always say that uh, must move. The under 18s are the face of the club. The under 18s are the face of the club, not the APC, not the under 16s. So make sure that you put in the show all the time. So when we get the boys from under 16s like this year, we got a different group this year that needed a little bit of work in the beginning. So I push them around in terms of football and they're developing gradually. They're a young group compared to what I had. Um, we just came from the engine now um, and, and they did very well. And the group that I had last year uh, won the Bay, the Bay Hill with, uh, with the APC Mutsepe team. They're doing well in that space. And, uh, and yeah, my, my mandate is simple. Develop players, develop the next um, first team players for this club and also um, going for, for, for PSL teams within the country. And also play for Bafana Bafana. Yeah, let's reflect a moment about the tournaments, including the Angel. Um, your perspective and your overall um, impression of the boys in, in all the competitions? Um, I've taken, uh, we will say, three tournaments so far, which is the Angel last year, um, which was the first one for many, many boys. I think we did well in that space. And uh, my only uh, problem complain was that uh, the opposition that we faced um, on every weekend, I mean our league, because we were in the third stream of Tiger Pegelefe and the AP season was off at that time, we did not play. Um, so our boys did not really get competitive games each and every weekend um, compared probably to clubs like Cape Town City who were playing MTC 
and Stellen Bosch, you know. Um, so when we get to that space at Ilanga, um, I knew once we come against strength with a strength, we might be challenged. And in the semi-final, we lost against Captain City 2-0, uh, uh, having made errors, not necessarily be beaten on the game, but we two, made two errors. But because we play against better opposition, we're punished. So we're out of the tournament, uh, we play against Stellen Bosch for third place, we won it last year. So this year, the group that we carried uh, was part of the group now. Uh, they were playing APC, which is better competition in each and every weekend. They went to the Bay Hill, they won the cup, they came back, uh, they joined the under-18s. So we went to Langa this year a little bit stronger um, with experience and also being the champions of the Bay Hill, which also put pressure on us because uh, everyone was actually looking at us in terms of we have seen these boys performing at Bella. Can they do it again? So mentally, it was also challenging and physical. I think we did well. We were in the toughest group uh, with Ubuntu, Classic Park, and Bay United. And uh, we ended up top of that group. We went to the quarterfinal against Hellenic. We won 2-0. Um, Semi-final against Telen Porsche. Um, we made an error. We considered an error. 25-25, um, it's not easy to come back. The boys fought hard. We equalized. Uh, penalties. Then we lost on penalties which is not so nice because, again, we came out uh, on, on semi-finals. We had to play against Ubuntu for third and fourth. Uh, I remember talking to the, the head of youth. Uh, he said, let's finish strong. Um, we had to play against Ubuntu, which we played against in the group stage. Again, we played nil nil. We won on penalties. Um, we finished number three again for the second time in a row. Improvement, there was a lot of improvement um, from last year. I think the tournament was better, holistically, the opposition was better, but if you ask me, we should have not lost that game against Stellenbosch. Um, but uh, yes, we said well done to Stellenbosch, and uh, we wish them good luck on the final. So, so it was a matter of uh, the luck was not our side on the day, we had the better team. So yeah. Let's talk about your preparations, as you prepare the teams and um, you reflect and you do your own research. Um, how much is it important for you as a coach to keep yourself up to date and what, what are some of the, the areas or maybe people that you look up to, some of the, the mentors? Uh, that's a very vital question because uh, football evolves all the time. Football evolves all the time. The, the way we train the players when I started coaching is different to how we're training players now. Um, there, were, there were no drills like uh, Rondo at that time, but now every coach, every training session is a Rondo. So, so, um, some, some, some of the things that I enjoy also doing. Um, what I do most of the time, I read a lot. Um, I follow Pep Guardiola a lot. I think uh, when it comes to coaching, he, he says the best mark. In South Africa, I follow Pep. Uh, in South Africa, I follow Pete Musimane because of his leadership quality and, 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 and how he set up his technical team around him. So the guy is a winner and he's, the reason he's a winner is how he set up the team around him. So when it comes to keeping myself equipped. Uh, I watch a lot of games, I, I follow a lot of trends, I learn a lot. I always complain about, uh, um, funny enough when I watch football, I complain about the angle that super sport gives us the game. Because I watch a game from a coach perspective. I don't watch a game from a fan perspective. So I normally say I wish super sport can view the game a little bit better so that you can see movements. You know why that center back is running in and all of those things. And the other thing, I, I interact a lot with other coaches. That is helping me a lot. Um, your likes of Nathan Paulson, um, your likes of Ian Taylor, uh, Daniel Throw, yeah, the coach that we have here, yeah, um, your Grumpy, um, I follow Rulani a lot. I follow other coaches, Eric Tinkler, what they do. So I make sure that I copy one or two things from them and add to what I know. So that helps me to evolve all the time. When it comes to um, preparation, the Tikamva, um, the, the players are all over the divisions. Um, some of them are with the under 16, some of them are with the under 18s. But when we have tournaments, and then the head of youth will normally say um, all the players must move in that uh, division that is going to have a tournament and prepare. So the preparation normally goes well. We, we have the resources, we have the fields, we have everything. Um, yes, but sometimes our fields are too good um, and also bad for us because when we go to these fields, um, in Mitchell's Plain in Langa, the grass is not like the same that we have at the camp. Sometimes we get to struggle on our game model, you know, putting ball on the ground. Um, but uh, that's not a reason or an excuse to not succeed. Um, we have the players at Ikamva, 
um, we have the resources, we have the coaches. Um, so we normally prepare well for tournaments all the time. Well, coach, what are some of the challenges that you, you've experienced and maybe you've turned those into, into positive? I think uh, the challenges that I, I had to face uh, coming in this environment and also now as a head coach of the uh, under, under 18 is firstly the public. Whose coach must move? You know, whose coach must move? And uh, we need that in life when, when people don't know about you and you must still make a name for yourself, you know. Yes, in the, build, in the building inside, because of uh, I was coming from being an assistant coach, the fellow coaches also knew who I, I was. So the, the, the challenge was all, always to, to prove to the parents that uh, your kids are in right hand, because they didn't know me, because I was not an ex-professional player. And also that's an, also a challenge that we get to face as coaches that uh, didn't probably play at NFT level, or PSL level, we only played probably Mutepe or Castle or LFA level. We get to be questioned about uh, our capability of you know coaching, and and sometimes coaching is an art. It's a, it's a God-given thing. Um, I always say, uh, playing the game and coaching the game is two different things. You can be good at playing, um, but now teaching can be something different. Also, with an intelligent guy that always get hundred uh, percent at school, now teaching kids or someone um, what you know it's, it's not that easy and that's just been some of the challenges that I had to face but um, as I said you must turn those challenges into positive to strive to be better because what I do every time when I put the session onto the field I make sure that uh, anyone at the club the owner the chief scout the head of youth my fellow coaches when they watch my session they can see this is well prepared there is a lot of thought behind it and this session is putting into developing players and it's so informative that the players are learning every day and they're developing as players. So to the public, when when they watch my team plays recently, when we go play Coke, uh, I, I get a lot of positive feedback as someone that probably didn't see on TV. You know, they will say, coach your team plays well. They coach your organization is so well. Coach your interaction with us. Because I get a lot of people coming to me asking questions about football, you know, fellow coaches and also the public. So I turn that in terms of educating them that, listen, uh, uh, I'm a sign of the soil, I'm coming from a township, I'm, 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 I've, I've worked hard for this, I've studied for this, I've, I've, I've you know, spent a lot of hours doing a research on it, I've learned from the best of the coaches, the likes of Dougal Trowe, the likes of uh, Gordon Vidboy, the likes of uh, uh, Nathan Paulson, Ian Taylor, um, Gorombi, you know, I, I'm ready for this. And I've turned that, you know, a little bit of challenging to a positive, to, to better myself. Yes. Every day is a challenge. Every day is a challenge. You must put in that session again. Um, you must face a different rival. Um, you must win a game. You must prepare a session. Uh, parents want their boys to be developed. The clubs want to win everything. Um, our CEO um, 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 demands us to win all the leagues, demands us to win all the tournaments. So it's, it's a personal struggle to, to better myself. Yes, I always come against good uh, coaches. Um, even in the engine, that I want to challenge myself against them as a coach, you know, make my team play better and uh, and uh, and be the winner all the time. But the most important thing is to be a good sportsmanship, is to be a good human being before I'm a good coach. And uh, the challenge that I have every day at the Canva, um, I always put a smile onto my face. It's, it's the challenges that uh, one will face also in the workplace. Um, and you need to be positive about it and trust the Lord and, uh, and, and, and go again and go again and go again. Thank you very much for this interview. It's uh, really appreciated. Uh, I would just like to want to say one thing to the up, uh, aspiring coaches from the township that also wants to be in this space. Uh, put in the hours, guys, where you are. Take it seriously. Be organized as much as you can. Be on time on training session. Plan your training session. Use what you have. If you want, if you don't have a coaching board, use water bottles. Use cones. Um, take the game seriously. Interact with other coaches ask for help, invite coaches, um, and make sure that you, be, you, you, you become the best at that space that you are before you come here. So that would be uh, my encouragement to my fellow coaches, young coaches that are coaching in the LFA level. Thank you very much.